Um, I would like to start by saying thank you to Robin and Michaela for joining us today. Um, it promises to be a very interesting workshop. We were originally going to be joined by a third person. Um, unfortunately, Bodhi hasn't been able to join us today, um, but I just want to say thank you for all the effort he put in beforehand preparing for the workshop. Um, just so you know, he was going to talk about Wikisource. Um, I do not feel qualified to fill in for his section on Wikisource, unfortunately. We won't be covering that today, but the flip side to this is that we have a bit more time to hear from Robin and Michaela and to ask them questions as well and work on some of the activities we'll be doing later on in the workshop. So every cloud does have a silver lining, um, but yes, uh, maybe it'd be worth putting questions about Wikisource on Telegram, perhaps not today during the workshop, but maybe tomorrow. And we'll see if Bodhi's available to answer those questions. Again, maybe not at the time, but perhaps later. So, welcome to this workshop. Uh, we will be sticking to the friendly space policy, as mentioned in the opening of the session. If there are any concerns around friendly space, you're welcome to contact Stuart Pryor, who's currently in this webinar. This workshop will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube afterwards, and I should think as well Wikimedia Commons. So if you do not want to appear in a recording, which is entirely fine, um, do remember to keep your microphone and video off. Um, if you're one of the attendees, that will be the default, so we don't need to worry about that. For our active participants who are in the room with us, we hope you might be able to um, interact directly with the speakers. So come off mic, come onto mic occasionally um, and ask questions. Uh, for everyone else, you are more than welcome to use uh, the chat function to talk to people. Um, do make sure that it's set to send a message to everyone. The default, I think, is to go to hosts and panelists. And that'll be handy for asking questions, but if you actually want to have a conversation with people in the room, make sure it's set to everyone. And it might be useful as well to use the Q&A function if you've got specifically a question that you want the speakers to answer at some point. Let's see. And do, of course, if you have Telegram, uh, check out the Celtic Knot Telegram groups. It's a very friendly bunch of people uh, and a very good place to ask questions or share thoughts during the conference. So what are we going to be covering today? Well, we're going to have a brief warm-up activity. Um, that's going to be mostly using the chat. Again, active participants are, are welcome to unmute during that. And then we'll be hearing from Robin and Michaela about their experience of running editing campaigns. Then we'll be moving to an activity where we're asking the audience, so we're asking you lots, um, what are the key points from these presentations? Then we'll head into a QA and a where you can get a bit more interactive. We can really ask, um, questions from Robin and Michaela, especially if there are any things which we uh, want clarified from what they've just been saying, or maybe there's something which hasn't come up which you want to explore a bit. Uh, so we'll have about 20 minutes for the Q&A, we'll see how that goes. And then we'll be moving into an activity where we're thinking about how to organise an editing campaign. We'll be making quite a lot of use of the chat at that point, and for our active participants, you can come off uh, mute to take part in that conversation. Um, and very helpfully, Leah will be curating some of these answers into a Jamboard, uh, which will help document what's going on. And then we'll have a brief wrap up at the end. So, first on our list of things to do is the warm up activity. So for this, I'm looking for you to think about what experience you have with editing campaigns. Um, 
have you taken part in any? Um, have you uh, helped organize some? Um, and then which ones did you participate? Uh, what was the aim of these campaigns? So please feel free to write your answers in the chat. Um, get into the, the habit of using the chat frequently. That's where a lot of good discussion will take place. Uh, and for you active participants in the room, um, you are more than welcome to unmute yourselves and give your answer live. So do you have any experience with editing campaigns? And if so, which campaigns are they? Uh, so for myself, um, I don't think I really have a lot of experience with this. I've, I've seen various editing campaigns, but I don't think I've really taken part in any. So it's going to be a lot for me to learn in this particular area. I'm just checking the chat. That seems to be all okay. Oh, ah, art and feminism being mentioned. Well, I think we'll be hearing a bit more about that. Um, yeah, they're a, a fascinating group. Do we have any others who'd like to share their experience? Ah, CEE -E Spring, yes. Uh, I do believe that's a, a regular editing campaign. Oh, yes, the various Wiki Loves projects. I must, I completely forgot about that. Um, yeah, they are great fun to be involved with, especially the photography campaigns. Well, that's, that's my particular enthusiasm with that. Oh, Wiki Green Conference from Maxwell. Um, I've not heard of Wiki Green Conference. Um, if you could mention in the chat what that is, that would be really interesting. Um, and Wiki Loves Africa from Gabriel as well. So lots of writing campaigns and a couple of photography campaigns as well. Oh, wow. Hello. The uh, top winner in uh, the Ghana History Contest last year. Well done. That is very impressive. Yeah, and it sounds like there's a lot of experience about taking part in contests. Uh, Serbia's International Roma Campaign. That sounds very interesting indeed. Various activities with, uh, I'm guessing that stands for Women in Red. Uh, monthly editing campaigns on various Norwegian language wikis, I'm guessing, from those uh, language codes. Oh, good shout out for one lib, one ref. I'd completely forgotten about that. Um, I've not really done much with that one myself, but yeah, it's, it's a good way of engaging librarians in a very specific kind of activity. So some really good comments there. Thank you everyone for uh, leaving those messages. And yes, uh, you pick, pointed out that um, those codes were for Norwegian and Sami. So, okie dokie then. In that case, I think now we're all warmed up, we're ready to hear some more from uh, our experts, Robin and Michaela. Uh, so there'll be one after the other, each talking about their particular experiences. Um, I think the default at the moment will be, I'll do the screen sharing, but Michaela mentioned that she had a video she wanted to share. So at that point, I might hand over to her. So yeah. Bear with us while we do some fairly annoying technical stuff and just, you know, swap screen sharing. So now we're at the stage. Oh, ooh, we have another warm up question, do we? Uh, what kind of audience would you like to engage with in your future campaigns? So, who do you really like to be 
working with on these campaigns. Same rules as before, feel free to use the chat. If anyone wants to come on mic, you're welcome to do so. Oh, I will also say at this point, to the people who are regular attendees, so able to watch, if you'd like to be an active participant, um, put a note in the chat and I can add you to the, uh, the panelists. Basically all that means is that you're able to ask questions directly. I don't have to mediate for you. We won't get sick of me reading out every single question that comes through. Um, and important to keep in mind is that you uh, will appear in the recording. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, if anyone wants to become an active participant, leave a note in the chat. Okie dokie then. So let's meet our speakers. We will be starting with uh, Robin Awain, who will be talking about the Welsh Wikipedia. So Robin, over to you. Well, good Richard. Um, um, wonderful to be here with you. And thanks for everything this morning. I really enjoyed it. I'm no expert, by the way. Um, I'm just an ordinary editor, uh, editor really. But I work um, also for Wikimedia UK for the past, what, eight, nine years. So I think I'll be wearing two caps here. One uh, mainly as an uh, um, organizer of editathons. Um, I'll, I'll concentrate on those, but um, I'll also move on to one or two other things. So, Richard, if you can um, close the share screen, then I can share mine, please. Oh, thanks. I might need to change the settings. Uh, I think you should be able to. Yeah, you can share. All right, here we go. Can you see that? There we go. So what I can see Thanks. is, okay. yeah, your browser with um, the UK with some parts highlighted in red and That's it. Northwest France. Yep, and there are some parts there, of course, are the Celtic nations. Um, so it's the Celtic knots. We have six Celtic nations, six languages. Apart from the Basque language, the six you can see there, the six languages, are the oldest in Europe, with the Brythonic before the Welsh language and before then the Celtic language, which was a unified language throughout most of Europe at the time. So we still speak uh, the Welsh language, 700,000 of us. I think about three to 400,000 speak Brythonic, Breton language and so on. So um, we do come together as editors, and I'm going, coming to one of the um, one of the editathons we are creating for September in a minute. But first of all, I'd like to take you back eight years to the first editathon I, I, I created, which is um, or which was this one, um, my first shot that is, which was a fistful of nuggets um, on the wiki voyage on the English wiki voyage. So we had, and it hasn't changed much since then really. The nuggets here is the horizontal, sorry, the um, vertical column you can see here. And because it's to do with voyages, it's about places, locations. So that's my wish list going down vertically. And the last one there, Cardiff, as you can see is, the capital of Wales. And then we have, of course, the languages which took part. Italian completed the whole lot. Um, so that's the first one eight years ago. So at the same time, on the English Wikipedia, I created this 2020 vision of Wales, which went a little bit further than just locations. For example, we have here the last Prince of Wales, Owain Glyndwr, and important things like rugby and football, um, Pentrevan, the old Celtic burial chambers, you can see 
two of them there, Bryn Cilly Ddu is the other one there. So this is an editathon for around 20, 25 languages. Anybody could join in. The difficulty here was adding your tick. You can see here um, the tick clearly, but when you go to Golagi, which means edit, then you need to add the tick somewhere here. Um, so you would have to find where exactly to put your tick. And that was complicated. We've come across that. Um, we've bridged that problem. Um, I'm going to just take this down here. Uh, we've bridged that problem by now using Wikidata. So I'll come to, back, come to that in a second. Um, there are many uh, other um, unofficial editathons on the Welsh Wikipedia, such as this one with Asturias, um, where that's our that's their wish list, and that's our wish list. So nothing complicated about it. This is really simple. If an article is created, the link turns blue, obviously. But it didn't in the other one, which was really colorful, but very difficult. So here it's automated. So let's move on to the, one of the last ones we had was um, an editathon between uh, the Palestine um, editors and the Welsh editors. So this one I created on Meta rather than on Wikipedia or, um, uh, or any other project. So, in this one, we started between the uh, Levant and the Wikimedia OK um, institutions um, and created, as you can see here at the end of the day, 57 Neo Arabic and 44 Cornish articles. They came in after a week and it was really good. They were, they were enthusiastic about it. It was the first time for them to join an editathon or a competition like this. So as you can see, the number of articles at the end of the day were 242. So once again, you had a wish list of articles. That's the wish list of the Palestine editors. Um, uh, food, places of interest, women, the coronavirus, culture, education, and so on. And then we have the wish list by the Welsh editors, um, once again divided through colour, um, and then the Cornish editors put their own list as well. Um, so that, in my in my view, worked well. Um, let, let's have a look at another one. This one is from Sweden, and it's they've taken a hundred articles, which every Wikipedia should have, if you like, about Sweden. So I thought, okay, well. Is this one easy? How do you know where to um, insert the fact that you've just created an article? And it's really difficult. Um, it's not that old, and yet it doesn't bring in Wikidata. So once again, you've got to find, right, that's my line, or is it this one? Nothing tells you, nothing helps you how to record the articles you've just created. So somebody mentioned in chat a few minutes ago, um, Alu, I think, mentioned no um, human rights. So we did this one um, on the Welsh Wikipedia, uh, which is the Human Rights 2021 challenge. Once again, you can see the wish list is the vertical one on the left with a picture as the one I had eight years ago, but the green cells here are changed automatically. So Arabic, Catalan, Welsh, German, English is the fifth column there. Um, so this one brings in, automates the difficult bit of mentioning which articles have been created. If I can stop there and show you one of them, and please stop me, Richard, if I if my ten minutes is coming to an end. You're good. You're good. Okay. Have more okay. Minutes, 
So if I click here, we don't see a table at all. What we've got are the Q codes or the QID codes from Wikidata. So the first one here would be the Human Rights Commissioner um, or, or the UN in, um, Human Rights Commission, Commissioner Robinson, um, Mary Robinson. And as you can see, most languages have an article on her. So it's automated, but it does not quantify the number of bytes um, a person uses. I'm moving on now to, an, uh, to the one I mentioned first of all in my introduction, if you like, of Wales and the Welsh language. And we are a collection of six languages, the Celtic, Edithathon. This one, once again, such as the same as the Palestine one I created on Meta. And each, well, to begin with, we decided to have a look at climate change, uh, 20 articles on climate change. They're in a developmental stage at the moment. All languages will be adding to, to these. And then we have 10 articles on each nation. So that's the Breton here. They've got one more to add and Wales underneath it. Um, and this time we've used the Wikidata to call up that table um, I haven't finished it yet. I will add images. Uh, we all like images. I do. So there will be an, a, a, the vertical column will be images called up from the preferred image on Wikidata automatically again. So all you need to do is to add the QID code there. So uh, um, that, this editathon will start in two months. Uh, what it does not have, as I mentioned earlier, is the number of bytes added by um, an editor. So what on my wish list will be, uh, uh, as happens on most um, wiki projects, I think the number of bytes added is equally as important as starting a new article. So if you like, automating that line there. Um, my last one, um, somebody mentioned Wikilove's Earth. Well, Wales took part in it. Here is our last year's winning image of a hair um, by Alan Williams, um, the name of the photographer, retired head teacher. Um, this year, we have had more than 5,000 photographs. Ghana, somebody mentioned in chat. I think Ghana was fourth, if I remember correctly. Here are the results so far, and I think most countries have finished. You get a month to work on it. It's all, it's all done by, um, by, through Wikidata, so it's automated. Um, this one comes from Toolforge and works out, as you can see, the top line there is Germany. The second one is um, a very small country called Wales. Uh, and then you've got very, very small countries such as Russia and Turkey just underneath it. There we are with, and Ghana, as you can see, is fifth there. And Spain, 1,400. So we're very proud of being on an international platform doing our best as an old, old country, more than 2000 years old, and we're still here and we're still um, doing what we can for the diversity of languages um, and culture, because the other side of it, of course, is one language, one culture, which is a, which is a horrible nightmare. So if you live in one of the countries where there is a minority country, which has been there for years, then please learn that language. If you're in Ireland, then please learn the Irish language. If you're in Wales, yes, please learn Welsh. Otherwise you become part of the problem. And I end there. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, Robin. So next up we have uh, Michaela talking about art and feminism. 
So I will resume screen sharing. Hopefully you can all see the slide deck again. Um, let me have a look. So Michaela, what I will do is I will give you the ability to move the slides along. Um, and if you want me to stop screen sharing at any point so that you can run the video, just let me mm -hmm. know. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> um, thank you, Robin. Um, I think one of the things I, that's why I love to come to those events. I learn so much every time, and specifically the data visualization behind the wiki road. I'm just fascinated by it. Um, but yeah, let's talk about art and feminism in Brazil, um, in Portuguese. So um, hello, everyone. As I was saying, my name is Micaela. I use she, her, Ella pronouns. I am an art historian and museum curator, but, and I'm actually from Brazil. I, my native language is Portuguese, Olá. And, but I'm based in Cambridge in Massachusetts from where I talk to you now. Um, but I'm here today in the capacity of a Wikipedia uh, editor and event organizer. Um, and I'll be specifically talking about our partnerships with the artistic community, even though I imagine that I could be talking about all the collaborations we do, and this will take kind of a day. Um, so let's just uh, move to the next slide. Yes. So I'll be talking today about um, two different organizations. And if you're wondering about the art and feminism organization that they have been doing. They are a US-based uh, or international organization. They have been doing amazing, amazing work. I'm gonna put in the chat later on a couple of links for you guys uh, to refer back uh, at some point. And I'm also gonna talk about Napopila, which is a Brazilian curatorial uh, collective uh, which I happen to be one of three co-founders. And I'm really proud of this uh, group because actually it's something that we do on the side of everything else that we do in our careers. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that I really need to say, and I repeat this a couple of times throughout this presentation, is just that we cannot do anything along, uh, especially organizing, even though it's online community engagement. We need our friends, we need our peers, uh, and even we need um, our counter, uh, we need a count counter argument sometimes so we can uh, create more uh, healthy discussions, if I may say. Um, so today I'm gonna present a bit about uh, the work we do with Napopila and the collaboration we've developed in the past almost five years now with art and feminism. And I think in the hopes of uh, sparking um, some ideas on you and for your future maybe event organizations um, and trying to create this bond of maybe online mutual, mutual aid, if I would say. So uh, things to know a little bit about Napopila, as I was saying, we are from Brazil but we are uh, an internet-based collective and we work alongside cultural institutions, museums, libraries, um, and organizations to create exhibitions, uh, cultural residencies, but we happened to meet uh, art and feminism uh, a few years ago and everything changed for us really. Uh, I think we're really uh, connected, attached to places but then we understood that the internet could be a place to organize as well. So we started to collaborate with art and feminism. And that's how everything started. Um, so this is actually a picture uh, from an event uh, that we're still doing in person back in the day. It was pre-pandemic. It feels like ages ago. Um, this was one of the events we did in an art school uh, in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Yeah, fun times. Um, hopefully we can do it again uh, mm -hmm. at some point. 
And uh, our first event, I should say, was in 2019. I've met uh, with the Art and Feminism Organization in January in a conference in New York City. And then we decided to do an event in March uh, to celebrate Women's Month, which is something that the Art and Feminism uh, actually have been doing for a while now, nine years exactly. So I should say that the first event was a mess. Uh, we didn't know anything, it was the first time that I was encountering Wikipedia, um, was kind of overwhelming even to teach uh, a workshop was something that was a very foreign uh, to me at the time. And it still is in many ways. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't know about Wiki. Um, yeah, but things changed uh, and we decided to invest um, in learning more. And in 2020, we had this huge plan of putting up a couple of events, but then the pandemic hit, um, as we all know now, it was impossible to meet in person, all of the cultural uh, institutions, they shut down for a while, so we shifted completely to the digital which is really exciting uh, because we understood we understood right away that uh, we could just not call our peers and organize alone and we could do it more. Um, so I think uh, thinking about, I think a huge shout out to the organizations that we partner, um, but most important to the artists uh, because even though artists are makers and often they are making objects. So for them, sticking to the online was a huge challenge, but they are, they are there for us. Um, and that was amazing. And I think as now as a co-founder of Napopila, I, I can say that we did 10 uh, successful events in the past two years. And uh, things we did, uh, we collaborated even internationally with the uh, Asian archive in America, both from in, in New York City and Hong Kong, and also this fantastic user group from Portugal called uh, Wiki Editoras LX. Um, and we had pretty much all of them, if not all of them, 90% of them, we had the support from uh, Wikipedia Brazil, which is a, a a group, a phenomenal group with phenomenal people that have been doing this advocacy for Wikipedia in Brazil for a while, uh, and they have been growing. And they had, uh, they first they taught me uh, how to we edit on Wikipedia, and they keep teaching me so much about not just organizing events, but how to bring people together in the Wiki community. So what I have here today. Uh, it's just a couple of very simple steps uh, that um, we can take to create uh, and just start a campaign, why not? So I know that what worked for me, uh, it might not be, it might not resonate for you because I know that there's sort of different contexts and geographies and of course languages, which is just the key element of this uh, conference. But there are a couple of things that we can do that they can be uh, translated uh, to different contexts. Uh, so one of them, uh, we selected a couple of themes uh, through how the years. Um, and then we celebrate uh, Walker's Day and also Black History Month. Um, and we have a holiday in Brazil. I think I froze for a second, but now I'm back. <laughs> and then we have uh, the Professor's Day and uh, the cultural art sector and all of the holidays that we would like to highlight. Um, we usually think about it. And we also think about it, who are the uh, knowledgeable people? Uh, understanding that we cannot speak on behalf of everyone. Uh, we come from more, from our own, our own perspectives and experiences. So we have to invite people who know about the topic. So beyond uh, picking a team, usually we, we invite guest speakers and they can come from our network. They can come from a friend of a friend. Um, sometimes we can create an open call. Um, and sometimes it's, a, it's someone that actually created a Wikipedia uh, entry about a certain topic uh, or is willing to change it. So we can just, you don't have to outsource uh, everything. You can even bring people from inside Wiki. 
And I think one of the most important things for us is just creating collaborations with artists and making them aware um, about Wiki uh, in a way that letting them know that this is actually another platform that they can use and take advantage of. Um, and I think one of the things that we love about it in a pupil is just the, I think the educational uh, nature of Wikipedia, which is just something that it's very dear to our hearts. It's something that we intend to do and continue to do. And something very important is actually because what we do is just inviting female identified and uh, non-binary artists, which is also a minority group within Wikipedia and the artistic system, not just in Brazil, but all over the world. Um, and this is just a, a block by block. We, try, we are trying to build a movement. But again, we cannot do it alone. So invite your peers to your events and it could be your friends from school, your roommates, um, your colleagues, someone that you met in a bus station, uh, why not? And people from the wiki road. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it. I would say that um, in a time-wise, usually I think we're at the, in the, at the beginning, of course, we took like, a couple of days to figure out themes, but now we're big, we're, big, we're getting like more uh, fast about it. Uh, we're getting more, uh, I would say smart about it. Uh, we kind of at this point need to, you have to try it uh, to, and sometimes fail, why not? Uh, and then you'll be successful again. So don't be afraid. Um, and as someone once told me, I think from the Wikipedia Brazil, you cannot break Wikipedia. Um, so you can test it. You can test things. And it's amazing to test and communicate. So, and I think one of the, I would just, I know that it, this might sound like a little bit of too much. So I wanted to bring a reflection about some guiding questions that you can take note and think about. Um, what topics are you most interested in? Uh, I think that folks in the chat, we can see that there's a variety of different movements inside of Wiki um, that you can uh, collaborate with. Um, and thinking about which topics and articles you want to develop and actually uh, who is your community actually inside of this whole uh, big uh, e ecology, I would say. Um, and I think here for you is an image of uh, a photo collaging. It's an artwork that was uh, developed by uh, an artist called Silvana um, from Brazil. And another thing we do is just that we teach artists, as, as I was saying, to include their work on Wiki so they can um, not just share in a free uh, license, uh, but also thinking about how other people can use their work in, in, in different platforms. Uh, so Silvana, she was generous enough to include her work. And later on, she now she's a well-known. I think this was an event that gave her a lot of visibility as well, not just on Wiki, but in life. She had been exhibiting in different venues, which is fantastic. Um, and she's still collaborating with, with us. Um, and she's also an, a Wikipedia editor today, which is amazing. And, um, I think, I'm not sure how much time do I have. Uh, Richard, please uh, let me know. Oh, I, I think I can give you three minutes. That's all right. Okay, all right. thank you. And well, maybe we can just um, think about it uh, briefly. Uh, why do we do this? Uh, why Napopila decided to shift to Wikipedia? Um, it's, we have been thinking, and it's something that it's part of our practice. We think a lot about gender bias on in everywhere, pretty much. And Wiki was just as this uh, reflection of society because encyclopedias, that's what they do. They reflect society in a way. We are here to think about the figures and numbers and seeing, for example, Robin's uh, data visualization and how we can make this more equal. Um, and thinking about equity, not just on Wiki, but how who edits, uh, but also what are the articles that are being created for Wikipedia. So this is a thing that actually, this is the bond between a popular and art and feminism. 
And I, I think this number might be a little bit outdated, but it's not much better than this. Um, so it's something again to reflect. And because I only might have one minute um, and I'm happy to answer questions later on and why I keep doing this. Um, and I have here for you a couple of uh, practical outcomes about uh, not just being at Wiki, because I was, as I was saying, we're a user group, but also we do things ex outside of Wiki. Um, so expanding and trying to connect the work we do between practice and material culture. And we're really attached to objects. We're museum people. <laughs> so uh, I think in the past year, we got this grant from the Wikimedia Foundation. We're very grateful about it. Um, and we were able to publish a catalog with all of the artists who have had created um, uh, pieces and graphic imagery and visuals for us uh, within the Wikipedia. And in this catalog, we were able to celebrate and thank um, and appreciate the efforts that everybody in our community of guest speakers and collaborators and institutions they did, um, because as you know, we're all volunteers on Wiki, which is something that it's just blows my mind how so many people in the world are willing to create knowledge together. And this is very powerful. Um, so we have a book to prove. So this is our uh, material evidence of the work that we have been doing and we hope it to grow. So I know that I told Richard about a film. I just wanted to, I don't know if I can find the film right now, but the film is about um, artistic intervention about a group, group of artists in Brazil who have been projecting in uh, buildings. And in a collaboration we did, they projected the weak numbers and the work we do. It's incredible. Um, I hope to find it. But if you go on the Napopila social media on Instagram, we have the film there. And I can also drop in the chat. Um, and thank you. Thank you for your time. I know that um, it might be a little bit different uh, from uh, from the work that I usually do. Um, and but we are we are very happy about this um, collaboration and getting into the wiki road. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel I should know for the audience that um, at one point the slides did jump ahead and that was uh, not Michaela's fault. I was trying to get a closer look at the picture on screen at the time because my chat box is right over it. Um, but Zoom doesn't like me trying to do that. It thought I was trying to do something with the slides. So thank you both. Um, a couple of really interesting uh, presentations there showing about how uh, some of the technical sides of competitions and editing drives and what considerations you need to have in mind to make sure they're accessible to people. And to make sure that, especially for trying to get new people involved, you need to make it as straightforward as possible and a way in which you can focus the content on the particular stream of work you're interested in. So, Yes, very interesting indeed. So I think now, let me see with the slides. Uh, we are going to move on to the questions for our speakers at this stage. So uh, you've heard them speak. Uh, now is your opportunity to ask them for a bit more information? Is there anything they mentioned which you'd like to hear more about? Um, would you like insight on some aspect of editing campaigns and drives which uh, hadn't been touched upon? Uh, so it's over to you at this stage. I think we're going to allow for up to 20 minutes for this. So we'll, we'll see what the audience comes up with. Um, and if you're in the last workshop, you'll know how this works, but everyone is welcome to use the chat. And for our active participants, you can also use a mic to ask your questions directly to our speakers. Uh, so we have a question 
Uh, Leah, would you like to come on mic and ask it yourself? Sure, of course. So this question was specifically for Michaela, since you told about the collaboration with the visual artist, which I find really amazing. But maybe that's my first um, Wikimedian uh, reflex, but I'm like, how do you deal with the um, free license? Um, do you explain the Creative Commons license to the artist and kind of convince them to release their work under free license? Or do you have another trick to have their work to appear on Wikipedia? That's a fantastic question. Um, and I say I should say that at the beginning, I wasn't aware of the licenses. So I was uh, naive about them as well. Um, so I had to study. And I keep looking on one too, because we know that this is pretty sensitive. Um, so a couple of things we do, we give them the option. So we ask them if they want to create something new, if there's any artwork that they feel that could be something that they are not thinking about. So of course, monetizing and selling. Um, and we know that there's, there are a couple of different licenses um, that they can choose from. And another option that we give them is just they don't have to include all of the artwork, but even a, maybe a fragment. It could be a piece, can be just if they cut the image in half, uh, they still will be able to do it and they still keep the integrity of the work. So they have a couple of options. And instead of maybe sometimes including a painting, if they have the sketch uh, in some artistic books, they can also include the sketch. So we have been trying to uh, create alternatives for them. And sometimes, because we know there's the, 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 the project Women in Red, and we know that many, many uh, wiki entries from female uh, and non-binary artists, they don't have the pictures. So another thing we do, we give them now the option to create an image um, and to include on those articles as well. And I mean, they have plenty of options. And I think I just show it Silvana because she was, again, generous enough to include the whole uh, piece, which is incredible. And it's such a beautiful and amazing piece. And this was part of her practice. What she told me was just the importance, the importance of including the whole piece was because she wanted for people to see different uh, narratives from uh, religious images. So it's something that she does in her practice, and I really respect that. So she included the whole piece, which is fantastic, but sometimes they don't do it. Uh, we worked, for example, with uh, the Tarantina, so the film collective who did the projection, projections I, I mentioned, and they only included a, a piece, um, which is pretty much a screenshot. They wanted to do a GIF that would be moving, which is fantastic, but they couldn't, uh, I think we lack uh, the time to do it but they're still thinking about it and they became editors as well. Um, yeah, in, they are making interventions in articles right now and they, they are a group of four and they have been working together which is just thinking about the, uh, the I think the, the, the expansion and having a life outside of the, the project uh, we had is just, I think about it as all the time and it's amazing. So we give them a couple of options. And if they say, no, this is my work and even we had, uh, Actually, last year we had an episode of an artist uh, that we invited and she included the work and she changed her mind two days later. And okay, well, she changed her mind. Is her, that's her work, that's her production. So we communicated with her beautiful, amazing friends from the Wikipedia Brazil and they instruct us on having her writing a letter to remove the image. So we did, um, and you cannot find it anymore. So yeah. Oh yeah, there's, oh, my friends. Uh, yes, I should say so, of course. So so one of the things, uh, the very important things from the art and feminism. So they came, came up with the call for action, which is this incredible uh, open call, um, often from uh, global self artists, female identified and non-binary. Uh, they can create a piece for Wiki. Um, 
which is incredible. So this last year, we had three winners from different countries. One was actually Tamirish from Brazil. And we ended up uh, working with Tamirish. She came as a guest speaker in the last editathon we did uh, in May, uh, was just now two months ago, it's crazy. Uh, but she came as a guest speaker to talk about her production. And yeah, and we'll be thinking about it as well because she's also a film artist uh, and there's the link, I love it. Uh, thank you. And there's a link uh, and you can sign up for it to create a piece for Wiki. And this is another uh, dimension of how this is uh, artistic movement. It's growing um, inside of Wiki. Not sure if I answered the question. Hopefully, yes. That's, that's really cool. Wiki commissioning artworks. I, I like that. Um, we also have a question closely related to, to this general topic. Um, how can one start up an art and feminism event or campaign in local communities? I love this question. Um, do it. Um, I think one of the things I can drop in the chat, Wiki um, as this whole road, uh, they are very good at uh, suggesting, but art and feminism as an independent organization, they're even better at in, teach you how to do it. Um, so they have this whole guide on their website and they became so, uh, uh, I would say, polished uh, throughout the years. Then now you have videos in different languages with translations to Portuguese, Spanish, French, English, uh, different languages, and they have ambassadors that you can ask questions and they are pretty much there for you. So I can drop again some of the links um, and they talk about even some grants that they have. And I should say that I use them a lot. Um, I was able to, I was awarded a few grants that helped us moving forward in our practice. Because sometimes you need uh, internet connection. Sometimes you need a daycare. For example, one uh, we have uh, a group of uh, single mothers that we work with. Um, so having the childcare is just very important uh, to them. And yeah, so I can uh, send you the link from out in feminism and I'm happy to of course email me and send me messages I can also chat uh in a different time I can set up a zoom whatever we can talk but I, I mean I I I I will I spoke with people doing in coffee shops with three people I as I was saying my first event we had in Apopila we were three but we have more four maybe a group of friends and someone that was just passing by outside and saw that this table full of women and she joined us. Uh, and then she came for every single event since then. Um, yeah, that's phenomenal. And even yesterday, she just sent me an email. She got into grad school and I was so proud because uh, it's something that, yeah, we create this friendship. So it's really cool. I'm gonna drop the link. Excellent, thank you. So I'm taking a look at the chat to see if we have any other questions. So if folks are having a think at the moment, um, I do have a question for Robin. Um, I'm really impressed with how ambitious those competitions are, um, involving lots of different languages. I was wondering, are there any challenges with involving that many languages? And were you, when you were starting the competition, did you hope that it would be people translating between the languages, translating Wikipedia pages, or would they be writing them from scratch themselves? And, and would one or the other have created some kind of issue or challenge? Yeah, interesting. Um, we're in a situation at the moment, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're 20 years down the line from the beginning of Wikipedia. Things have progressed technically, making life easier. You know, it, it, it should be dead simple by now to get the columns colourful. 
additional knowledge, such as um, the number of bites added by each person, be it a, um, in the competition or not. Um, but you also have more than just Wikidata, you have um, articles written in other languages which you can harvest um, in addition to Wikidata. So when I spearheaded the gender um, wiki project on the Welsh language, we call it, or I collated all data I could on all feminists and um, or females basically from Portuguese, from Spanish, from other languages, not just English. And used that information then uh, um, to create articles, uh, new articles. So we became the first wiki to have an equilibrium of gender between the number of articles on males and females. So today, in fact, we have a gender gap and that is in favor of females. More articles on females, I think it's about 450 than we have on, on, on males. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so um, it, it, it is possible. Um, you know, somebody this morning said, yes, each language has the right to create its own rules. As long as we keep to the five important columns of Wikipedia, if we keep within that, then yes, the notability can be changed. The um, other elements, other criteria can be changed to make, um, to give women the uh, international stage, which they really should have, and bring things a little bit nearer to um, a, an impartial state. You know, we are living in a in a in a horrible world where men dictate, still do dictate a lot, and don't question that. Um, but technology-wise, I think we can use Wikimedia. Wikimedia. For our, in favour of bringing um, an equilibrium, if you like, in all languages. The problem is, the bigger the language, the more difficult it is to come to an agreement. It's the same with getting Wikidata um, to create information, not in the info box, which is very simple, but actual sentences, paragraphs coming in from Wikidata. As long as the community um, can um, filter that information and not be thrown at us from uh, the international stage, from a global big brother stage, if you like, then uh, yes, there's nothing at all wrong with it. But you try and get some of the largest languages to discuss that point and you'll immediately be banned from their wiki. Um, I think small is beautiful. We can change quickly. We can move quickly and we can morph into a, um, a colourful bird, if you like, whereas the large Wikipedias are dinosaurs which cannot come to agreement on things like gender balance um, and political matters as well, nationality and that kind of thing, where many are blinkered by NATO's um, um, way of stating, well, only only um, sovereign states can compete in Wikilove's monuments, if you like. Whereas Wikilove's Earth says, if there's a group of people who want to contribute, go for it. So, um, small is beautiful. We have the technology. Now let's get a better Wikipedia in all languages. Uh, and in the chat, some very uh loving news from Inari saying Wikipedia, which says that um they've been catching up with the world of Wikipedia as well. Uh and last time they checked, um they had more articles about women than anyone else. So very well done. Um, are there any further questions from the audience? Okie dokie then. So let's see. We are now about to move into uh, one of the activities. We are doing a collective 
note-taking exercise with this. And what's going to happen is that we will be suggesting things in the chat and of course on mic as well. Um, and Leah will be putting them into a Jamboard. So documenting what we're coming up with as a result of these activities. And the point is we really want to think about running our own editing drives and competitions and what will be important for us. And so the, the participation from the audience will be all important with this. We want to make sure that we do something uh, which is a very useful resource for us. Uh, let's see. So Leah, did you want me to share the link with the audience or will you just be doing it yourself? No, the idea was that you would share your screen with the board. I share it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's stop screen sharing and pull up that Jamboard. So for everyone, if you want to mention anything that you took away from the discussion so far, feel free to write it in the chat or say it out loud, and I will make sure that it's collected in this document. This is one of the documents that we will share with people who didn't have the chance to attend this workshop. So it's really helpful if we can basically add as much as we can on this. Absolutely. So our first topic is what do we take away from these presentations? What are the most important bits? Um, what really grabbed your attention? Um, is it going to be a particular focus on a select group? Um, is it reminding yourself that you can start small? It can be a group of two or three people at a, a table in a cafe and build into something. So please do use the chat to leave your suggestions in there. And for active participants, you're also very welcome to uh, use the mic. So we've got something very helpful in the chat already. What I'll be doing is I'll be reading them out um, so that we've got them in the recording and to help there as well. So the main thing is to try not to overthink it and just do it. So that's a really good point. I think that with a lot of these things, just having a go can be really helpful. Um, and especially because the first time things happen, you're going to learn an awful lot about them. Um, and that's going to be really helpful for yourself and your community. Um, and so hopefully it wouldn't be the, the only one done so that you can learn from that and then put it into practice. So what else do we have? Do take, oh, excuse me. Do take a moment to have a think about that. <laughs> so we've got a comment in the chat. Wherever you go, try and learn something about the smaller languages around. And I think that's a really good point. These languages are something you can engage with. It can be, it can help you learn about a culture. And I think that's one of the, the things I really like about the ambitious projects that the Welsh Wikipedia has done. It's picking a selection of topics and encouraging people to engage with them, learn about them, and then share that through Wikipedia so that other people can learn about it as well. Oh, a very good point here. 
ask questions whenever you're confused. There's always someone willing to help out. Absolutely. I think that's a really good point. No one's expected to know everything, especially if you are just starting out on your journey with running things or taking part in competitions. If you're looking to take part in a competition, um, I mean, you should ask those questions if anything's unclear. It will be very helpful, not just for you, but for anyone else as well. Um, if you've got a question, it's likely someone else is having that same question as well. And uh, a good point from Daria too, um, Art and Feminism sounds like a great organisation to uh, be involved with uh, and look for advice from. Ooh. So Gabriel says, uh, I think we should try and get the Creative Commons license available for everyone. Uh, so that's a useful thing to consider, making sure that it's clear what people are, are doing when they add stuff to Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons, especially for um, activities around images. That is all important that people can find out about Creative Commons licenses to make it clear what the terms are. And so that also people realize that they get credited for their work, whether that's sharing an image or write on Wikipedia, they do get the, the credit for engaging that way. So what else do we have from the audience? Uh, and we've got a note of support for Creative Commons capacity building. Um, I think capacity building as a whole is quite useful. So there are some things you can do by yourself, but I think as well, if you're involving other people, that can, that can really help. Um, it can help you consider things which you might not have thought of previously, but also, I mean, running a competition can be hard work or an activity drive. Um, so yeah, having people who can help out with that is a very sensible thing to do. So find a way to build that capacity. And Richard, if I may say something, something I learned from Robin's presentation is just about the data visualization. And I was just thinking about the post event, what happened after um, an event is just, how do you present uh, the metrics? Because I think something as we all know about Wiki is just the metrics all around. Um, so I think thinking about how to present data is just something really interesting. And there's so many beautiful ways to do it. You don't have to do uh, the regular way. So we're just loving uh, Robin's uh, charts and graphs and uh, spreadsheets and everything that was on it. That's a really good point. And on a related note, I'd say talk about what it is that's happened, share the results, because there's a lot of really good work going on here. Um, and it's empowering to hear about these stories and think that this could happen with my community. And also, if you're just someone who reads Wikipedia, to hear about these activities is very reassuring. You want to know that people are actively engaging with it, trying to make editing fun, addressing areas of content that are important. So yeah, sharing the results um, is very important and telling those stories about them. Yeah, uh, one point here, um, following with Michaela, um, a, with a part of the picture, if you like, um is a uh, similar to that is what we did with sound clips in Wales rather than giving a whole um 
song, if you like, um, and we're dealing mostly here now with about 7,500 popular pop songs um, in Welsh. Um, I went to the company and asked them, could we have clips of 25 seconds, less than 30? And they said, yes, it'll help us to market, if you like, on Wikipedia, the fact somebody could hear 25 seconds and then say, yes, I'll go to their website, see the attribution, buy the record or the year, um, or whatever it is. Um, so it, I think that's sim similar to sharing um, part of the picture. And we're doing something similar with the transcription from an old manuscript, um, whereby we're not looking at taking the whole transcription from an university, but looking at an element of it. So that the uh, um, letters are more or less the same, but the symbols of, you know, um, missing letters and so on are left out. So we're given part of the of the um, picture once again. So, yeah, um, it would be wonderful if we could get everything from everybody. We, we don't live in that world. And if people want to share part of it, then let's say thank you very much. You get something out of it as well, because uh, it's a two-way two uh, um, uh, road, isn't it, rather than a cul-de-sac. Uh, that's how it should be anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that really stood out to me as well, the way in which you can share part of a work and find a way to help the creators behind those works understand that there are ways in which they can kind of meet halfway. Okie dokie. Do we have any more suggestions from the audience? I see the Jamboard is filling up quite nicely. Okie dokie. I'll wait a couple of moments just in case. As you do then, Richard, um, one competition would, which would be fantastic, um, in my humble opinion, would be a population, whereby uh, um, the population of any town, village, city could be generated automatically within an article straight from Wikidata. Mm. Um, we've done this on all six Celtic languages, that they all have the word pop in a template, you know, the double lips template. So they just put the pop there and automatically it arrives from Wikidata with nothing else, just putting, the, putting that in. Because populations change all the time and we need the Wikipedia which is alive and true and up to date really. So we, we need to we need to get this on all languages, in my in my opinion, and maybe a competition to that effect would help to do that. Absolutely, yeah. I imagine there are a lot of pages which are out of date, and it it can be nice to turn that kind of activity into a competition. So thinking about how you can turn things into a game, right? And um, very well pointed out, Leah, there is a workshop to do with Wikidata tomorrow. Um, so that might spark some ideas as well. Uh, and Robin, have you seen that message in the chat? Excellent. So I think we will move on to the next question at hand, uh, which is, what do we need to organize an editing campaign? So, if we're running a kind of campaign, what do we, what are the building blocks? So, thinking about what Robin and Mikhail have been talking about already, what lessons can we take from that? And what do we need in place to make it work? So, let's start from the absolute basics. What do we need to make an editing campaign? So please, again, do use the chat and let's hear from the audience.
And if you're unsure, it might also help to think about the other direction as well. If you were going to take part in a competition, what would motivate you to do that? What would draw you in to a writing contest? Whether that's on Wikipedia or Wikivoyage or something to do with Wikimedia Commons. Maybe it's one of those things which uh, most appeals to you. And we've got, we can break them down into three different categories. So we can have a, a checklist. So we need this, this, and this before we can go any further. Whether that's we need prizes or we need um, a timeline. Um, actually, as a bad example, because the next bit is a timeline. The timeline, what kind of things do we need to build in there? How much time? Do we need for the actual uh, editing drive itself? Do we need time before or afterwards for evaluation, uh, putting out surveys, that kind of thing? And if you've got any questions about how this could be done, so open questions for things you'd like to know more about. Ah, we have something for the checklist. Um, a list of topics, if it will be based around a specific topic or topics. Um, so yeah, some pages that people can actually work on or topic areas they can engage with. I think that's probably quite important. A writing contest that is just say about Wikipedia as a whole um, might be quite difficult to manage. I think one of the good things as well about these contests is that you can pick an area to focus on. You can say our coverage of this could be better and so we're going to use this contest to improve it and at the end of it you've also got this story so you can say this is how it was to begin with, this is what we did to overcome that, and this is how much better it is now. These are the stories of what we've done to improve these sites. Oh, good suggestion by Leah. Possible partners to work with, that can be a good way of involving new audiences. Um, and participants to contact. So you want people to actually take part in the contest. You need to find a way to get people involved. And a good way of doing that can be to work with other organizations. I think I heard someone there and talk straight over them. Would someone like to speak? If not, can I just mention the uh, Palestine uh, um, editor thing we we did, Richard? Absolutely. It, it, because um, much information um, isn't available, um, we had always wanted more information on Palestine uh, topics um, in the. Donostia um, conference, the education conference, which was held um, about four or five years ago, I met physically <laughs> when when we did things like that um, at the conference in Donostia, four or five uh, women from the Levant um, Wikimedia. And actually seeing them, talking with them was fantastic. You know, I'd never met anyone from uh, Jordan or Palestine before. And to see the gaps in Wikipedia, in the Welsh Wikipedia, being filled by their help, it was so good to be able to reach out physically, not, not um, digitally online, that it, it's good, but it was so good 
seeing actual editors and sharing stuff. So that's what instigated the editathon, which we did then uh, um, between the Levant and ourselves and the Cornish as well um, came in. So, yeah, I think it's as as um, you pick said, you know, it's got to begin with the gaps on your know, Wikipedia um, to begin with. But I think the element, the human nature then comes in, well, if you know somebody, it's much easier working with them than that, rather than a name you've heard of and never met, you know? I think that's a really good point. And it goes to the whole issue of it really is a community. And I think that leads as well to one of those open questions on the right-hand side of the screen. With your activity, is it going to be entirely online or is there going to be an in-person element like um, a meetup? And it would be an extra thing to organize. It makes it a bit more complicated, but it has potential benefits like Robin just said, and it can be a good way to get new people involved and it can reinforce the community that's already there. Those, those personal connections are so much easier if you can see someone face to face. Um, they're not just a name on a screen. I'd like to think that also online events like this are useful because it's, I mean, very literally establishing dialogues um, and helps that community feel. And I think that in-person events might help with that as well. So what else do we have in the chats? Seems got a few other things. Um, a good point by Yupik. Um, it seems easier to give people a small set of desired articles, as well as the people who can't decide or figure out what they want to write about. So having it tightly focused might help as well. It probably helps make it feel quite manageable. Um, and especially useful for people who are looking for those ideas. Yeah, I think there's a good case for having the next Celtic knot in person uh, or really some element. Um, as a, some of the satellite events are indeed. Uh, okay, do we have any more thoughts about this? I notice there's plenty of space under the timeline. I think that's not necessarily saying set aside two weeks to run the competition, but saying what kind of things you would need time for. Um, I suspect you might need time to prepare that topic and perhaps even a list of things people can do to get involved. Oh, we've got one for the checklist. Uh, for on-site campaigns, make sure you have a reservation for the place and double check it. That's a good point. Um, always make sure you have the space and do confirm. Don't want to get caught out. Um, I think Wikimedians are an understanding and friendly lot, but make it easy for yourself and always confirm that kind of thing. Okay, are there any questions we should consider when uh, organizing a campaign? So what, oh, we got something for the timeline. Uh, I liked Michaela's point about connecting things happening in the external world, like International Women's Day. Absolutely. Connecting these drives and activities to things that happen in the real world is a really good idea. It makes it topical. It helps with communication as well. It gives you a chance to reach that broader audience because they're thinking about these real world dates and activities. And if you then showcase a lot of Wikimedia around that, it's a way to engage people. Yes, look for useful dates in the calendar.
Yes, um Editathon uh, is continuing, you know, three or four years afterwards, as you could see, there are still some red links. So you 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 try and um, inspire people. It might not work straight away. If you limit it for a day, then um, if the inspiration is there, it'll continue itself until you know um, if it's good. If it if it's fun, it's better, I think. If it's for people to concentrate on their own hobbies, then it's much better. They have a message. They have fire within themselves to inspire them. So I, I don't think we need to, um, you know, there's a cutoff sometimes if it's a competition. This morning, uh, um, one, of the, um, one of the people said that uh, it makes a difference if there is a reward at the end. And that reward could be anything, practically. It doesn't have to be monetary. Um, but the ones I've made so far, you know, it's it's just a token, really. Uh, um, the prestige of winning the competition is is enough um, for most people, I think. But, um, yes, at the times, maybe we do need um, something such as a book or whatever, just to say, Thanks for contributing to this fantastic project um, worldwide. Absolutely. I think Tail recognizing people's contributions is important. Yeah, yeah. And tailing it to the community as well, isn't it? The individual community is so, so important. But I love the idea of going into the big world. Uh, and Michaela has made me think of um, another competition one day where we could um, use artists um and bring them aboard rather than us going out to them that um you know we could be part of their world rather than uh, them and us you know the clams over there we keep mm. wikimedians over here um yeah 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 uh and on the note around incentivization a good point as well saying that it's an opportunity to work with other parties, ask them to sponsor the prizes. Um, so yeah, I like the sound of that. Ah, yeah, so for people who were in the last workshop, the issue around the IP block may be familiar, but if you weren't there, um, yeah, there are sometimes challenges around involving people because various IP ranges are blocked. So finding a way to deal with that is quite important if you're trying to engage a wide audience. So yeah, I think that probably falls under open questions. How do you deal with an IP block? Um, as that's as kind of a, a technical point, but very useful to add, absolutely. You want to make sure that people can take part. Good, good. In fact, Leah makes a very good point that this could go on the wish list, which I think leads us to our next point. Do we have any final suggestions for what we need to organise an editing campaign? Okie dokie. In that case, I think that takes us to our third and final slide, a wish list. What do we want to make the process easier? So what would we like to make our lives easier when it comes to running the competition? So I think that relates back to the uh, IP address uh, and that being blocks. Um, I feel like that's there's an important part from Robin's talk as well around finding some way to automate things, make it accessible. Mm. And uh, see if there's anything else which can help with the heavy lifting. So over the to template. you in the audience. Oh, the, te ahead, Robin. the template is the language matrix and it's been written in Lua. Um, can't remember by who, I think Jura was part of it. But if that, if that um, language matrix could be extended to bring in automatically colors 
and images and the banner representing um, languages, it would make life much easier. If you went to the second step then and brought in the number of bytes, you know, similar to the dashboard we have, bringing different elements into it, wow, it could be a really good thing. So that's my wish, wish list, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Automated metrics dashboard, absolutely. That would be pretty damn handy. Uh, what else? What will be exceptionally useful for this? I will say for you folks in the audience, it may be something which doesn't have to be particularly realistic. I think we're allowed to be ambitious. We can say we'd like this to happen. We like um, the perfect tool, which makes this so much easier. Um, and there may not be no quick fix with that, but if we at least have a think about it, who knows where it might lead. So, for you folks in the audience, what would go on your wish list? So I think it's especially about making our lives easier with people who are taking part in competitions or running competitions. Um, but I mean, if you've got something in mind, do you feel free to drop it in the chat? Well, they're thinking, Richard, um, something that comes to my mind is what, what I said a few seconds ago, bringing the community aboard, but bringing institutions aboard as well. So with Wiki Loves Earth this year, I approached the Welsh government and they said, yes, we'll be a partner in it. Of course, Wikimedia OK um, was the first one and the, well, and the National Library, Jason, we heard earlier on. And then we went to the three national parks and all three said, yes, count us in. We will help, we will tweet and so on. So being part of the big world, I think, by bringing institutions like that uh, is, uh, is, is really necessary because Wikipedia cannot be insular in a, in a little bubble. You know, it's, it's part of life, institutions, groups of people, communities and so on. So, yeah, we, we do go to, to, sim, to, the, you know, to other people. Uh, um, we went to Natural Resource Wales, which is uh, um, one of the largest institutions in Wales, dealing with water, flora, fauna, um, and, and so on. So bringing pe other people, other groups aboard, I think is, is an absolute necessity in life, yeah, for yeah. this to succeed, yeah. So I think we could, for the wish list formats, um, some enthusiastic and high profile external partner organizations would be really nice. Um, I mean, it's, it's a perfect storm with that. Um, there are all sorts of partner organizations you can work with, and it's not just about profile, despite having that on the wish list maybe, but I mean, there are a huge amount that partners can bring to uh, activities like this, not least of which is helping new people engage with the Wikimedia projects. In the chat, I think someone might be inspiring Robin to uh, do more stuff around Welsh music. Okay, folks, do we have any more thoughts for the wish list? Have a quick look back at the chat in case I've missed anything. Um, I'm not sure if this is for the wish list or the previous slide, but there's a good point in there that it's good to have a checklist of things to do and a timeline of when they should be done. I think that's what we were striving to do with the previous slide, but as something to have on the wish list, absolutely. That's the kind of information you want to have. Okie dokie then. I think 
in that case. Uh, Leah, are you happy with the state of the Jamboard? Yes, absolutely. Thanks all for your contributions. Right then. So I'm going to switch back to the slide deck. And we'll get on to the final leg of the session. Right, folks, this is the wrap up for the session. So, for one last time, I want you to use the chat to say what's one interesting thing you got out of this workshop. Uh, what might you do next uh, to move forward with your project? Do you have an idea for a project that you want to take forward? Um, how confident do you feel about running or joining uh, an editing campaign and what else would you need? So let's start with the first one there. Uh, name one interesting thing you got out of this workshop. The more the merrier with this, please do use the chat. And if you're an active participant, you're welcome to unmute yourself. Uh, for my part, it's a reminder of how valuable editing activities like this and contests and competitions are to communities. It's a way to generate interest and put focus on a particular topic area. Right, and the next question. What might you do next uh, to move forward with your project? Are you at the stage of coming up with an idea for a contest? Have you already got an idea and now you're going to put it into practice? Um, do you want to look for potential partner organisations to work with? Um, what might you do next with your project? I think on my end, I would like to include music now. And I think I'm really interested now in knowing more about including sound um, on Wiki. I think this is new. Um, and I'm really curious how to interact with sound on Wikipedia. Absolutely. There are not enough sounds being used on Wikipedia. It's something which has a lot to offer, definitely. Thank you, Dirk. And perhaps a really key question. Um, how confident do you feel about running or joining an editing workshop? Does it feel like there's just so much to do? Has it made it all seem very feasible? How do you feel about it? Thank you, Anwuku. That's very useful to know. Um, they feel like they've learned to collaborate with others who share uh, the same view. I think working with a, a like-minded group is very helpful for activities like this. Stuart, have you raised your hand? I did. It was just about the sound files. Um, because I think I've had some good experience in sort of multilingual editing, being able to add sound files to lots of different projects quite easily. Um, though some projects are more conducive to it than others, and it helps if it's something which is not language specific, so music or like uh, sounds from nature and stuff like that. But as Richard mentioned, 
um, sometimes the copyright or getting access to this stuff is quite difficult. So there's always a bit of a challenge. It's something that we're always trying to work on to get uh, more sound file, file, file releases. Thank you. This is so interesting. And I'm thinking about radio station archives, um, thinking a little bit about how the glam works for museums and image copyrights, and maybe thinking about sound copyrights. I don't know much about it, but I, I know something about images, but sound might be similar or not. I don't know. I mean, it depends where you are. So like it might be different, yeah. very different in Brazil than it is in the UK or something, but um, usually it's somewhat similar to image copyright. Um, and sometimes even a bit more complicated because like the the radio station might technically own them, but the radio station doesn't exist anymore or something like that. Um, but there's loads of really good opportunities because often audio files map really well onto articles. And the other things that's useful is um, like oral history recordings. So you can have someone talk about like being a steel worker in this place in the 60s or something. And that way you kind of get past the problem with citations and, and, and the fact that only certain people are kind of um, expressed or given voices in certain sources in which oral history is a bit more open to that. So, so yeah, lots of opportunities. Thank you, this is so awesome. Uh, and on the subject of sound files, uh, Leah makes a very good point uh, that the Lingua, Li sorry, Lingua Libre project is a good way to uh, get started. It's about recording pronunciations of words in your language. Um, it's a really interesting project. We had them present, I think it was last year, and there's an update from them in the video pool as well. So please do check that out. There's a second one, but it's um, by Mozilla. Um, I can't remember its name, um, but that one's on CC0 as well. So every language could upload it to Commons with no problem at all um, and look at it as a source then, which could be downloaded to create games and so on uh, um, because it's on the CC0. Um, but the British Library, coming back to what Stuart said, the British Library um, did release many of its bird songs songs of birds singing, um, which were recorded years ago. Um, we, we had a little project there, Wikimedia OK had a wonderful project there um, of adding the sound clips to the articles. On the Welsh Wiki Wikipedia, we've got all 9,500 birds articles and the sound clips are taken automatically in the info box. Um, so anytime somebody records one, it goes automatically then, of course, to that um, article. I know that the, um, the, um, the uh, what do you call them? <laughs> the, oh, well, there is one language um, and rather than, because they haven't got a lot of references or sources, written sources, they have a library of clips of old people talking, which they use as reference then, rather than references to non-existent books. They, they use the recordings um, uh, for, as references, if you like. And I see nothing at all wrong with that. I think it's wonderful. Um, there are 45,000 um, clips and each one is around 20 minutes in Cardiff of people talking since 1958. And um, I had a conversation down in the archives there where they keep them. How long will it take to get these on, uh, on the web? You know, um, there are so many of them there. And the answer I was given, and I know this is being recorded, but I will say it, the answer I was given was at least 50 years. So I said, well, how about working with Wikipedia to get them on the web a little bit quicker using bots and so on? So, um, yeah, sound is, it, well, it's language, isn't it? Mm. So let's, let's, um, let's hug it. Absolutely. Um, and a lovely comment from Alu in the chat saying, 
I've learned that one can always have the opportunity to learn new things about the projects. Um, yeah, there's, there's an awful lot to learn about this kind of activity. And it's, it's a good way of learning more about the Wiki project as well, by taking part in them, the editing drives and organizing some of them as well. So the final question, uh, what else would you need? Now that's, that's quite a big open-ended one. We may not get uh, all of that today, um, but again, please do use the chat. And while you're having a think about that, um, I will just let you know that uh, there's a community involved with Celtic Knots. Um, so if you do have questions or thoughts, it's a good place to go to the Telegram to get involved and ask people for advice. Um, it's, it's a really welcoming group and it's good to be involved with. Uh, and the next session will be at... Bear with me, it's gone out of my head. Um, I think it might be at uh, half four UK time. No, it's not. It's four o'clock UTC zero. Um, please refer to the emails for the links. Uh, and that's in a little over two hours. Thank you, Leah, for the link there. Um, and that will be a facilitated discussion to, uh, yeah, to share a bit about what we've been thinking about today and really it's going to be a, quite a, a sociable part of the conference. So I think that's it for this particular workshop, all of which remains is for us to thank our speakers and our audience as well for joining us. Um, the Celtic Knot is reliant on our audience and our speakers. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming along today. And I hope to see you at the session in two hours and a little under 10 minutes. Have a good afternoon, everyone.